what it do, what it do, what it does. How y'all doing today? Now, after speaking to God through the burning bush, Moses and A. Aaron were on a mission. Moses and A. Aaron were traveling back to Egypt to speak with Pharaoh. And Moses was carrying a staff that God had given him. Now, God gave Moses this cane to help even out his pit wall. You feel me? You feel me? Because you can't be saving God's people walking lopsided. And Moses' brother Aaron helped him talk to Pharaoh. They were probably finishing each other's sentences. I got your back, boy. They said to Pharaoh, you must let God's people go. But Pharaoh said, nope, he did not know Israel's God. And that was his first mistake, not knowing God. First impressions are everything. And it looked like Pharaoh was not making a good one. And because Pharaoh said no, God performed many different types of miracles to try to convince Pharaoh to let God's people leave Egypt. Now, God knows how to make a great first impression. Oh, you won't let my people go. <laughs> and to think I was going to invite you to the barbecue. <laughs> oh, Pharaoh, now you going to feel my wrath. God sent frogs into Egypt that jumped into people's beds and into their ovens. But Pharaoh said no. Honestly, the frogs were a little bit more of a gift than a punishment. I mean, instead of waking up in the morning with some chocolate on your pillow, you got a nice little cute froggy. And then God threw them into the oven too. I mean, they, that's frog legs right there. Ugh, frog legs. Never mind, that is a punishment. Next, God sent buzzing flies that flew into people's houses and covered the entire ground. Everywhere. <laughs> And then he sent even more disasters called plagues to hurt the Egyptian people. But Pharaoh said no. So God sent pounding hailstorms to destroy the Egyptian people's crops. But Pharaoh said no. So God sent grasshoppers that ate every growing plant. But Pharaoh still said no. Even after God sent a deep darkness that covered the entire land, Pharaoh still said no. And Moses and Aaron kept coming back to Egypt and warning Pharaoh, but he wouldn't listen. And at this point, Pharaoh's just doing it to himself. Because God's power is almighty and great. Yet, he's using Moses and Aaron to ask him for consent to take God's people back. See, they're getting consent because they are gentlemen. Chivalry's not dead. Now there was one more terrible plague that would come. Each Egyptian family would lose their firstborn son. And after that, Pharaoh would tell Moses and Aaron that they can take God's people and leave Egypt. So God told Moses that Pharaoh was going to say yes this time. So Moses warned all God's people. And they packed up all their stuff and they were ready to go. See, God knew exactly what he was doing. He could have led with the worst plague, but he gave Pharaoh all of these other opportunities because even though he's extremely powerful, he is a fair God. I think the message of the story today is to obey God. Now, as we see in this story, disobedience to God can lead to catastrophic events. Now, I am not saying that every bad thing that happens is a punishment from God. We have free will, so sometimes we make decisions that put ourselves in terrible circumstances. However, when we follow God and obey Him because we want to be in a relationship with Him and experience His love and His great plans, then we will begin to trust Him to the point where no matter what comes our way, we know that He will take care of us. Now, bad things may still happen, but that's because we live in a bad world. But obeying God and having faith in Him is saying that you believe that God can turn any of these terrible bad situations into miracles. I hope you enjoyed this story today. And I pray that you understand the message that when we trust and obey God, we start to see and realize that he can turn any terrible situation into something amazing. I hope to see you next week. And remember this, I smile cause I'm saved. Saved by the blood, baby. God bless you and I love you.